en el Perú 12 millones de personas no tienen los servicios básicos de agua y desagüe. Estamos 12 hablando, millones. Estamos hablando casi de un 40% del total de la población peruana. Como en, en Tacna hay muchos eh, asentamientos humanos que eh, Perú crece en forma desordenada. Hasta 400 litros de agua al día. Chepo, que estamos en Perú, estamos en la Tacna. Nada más. Perú. Which is the southern part of Peru, uh, the the top part of the Atacama Desert. Uh, this is the driest desert on Earth. Um, logically, the the water scarcity is the biggest problem of this city. Uh, the city has 300,000 inhabitants, and it's a pretty big city. Our project location is uh, on the outskirts of Tacna, which is the location with the biggest water scarcity issues. Uh, we're going to create a fountain of water first. We're going to do this by installing fog nets and catching water from the fog that comes in at night. We're going to use this for two purposes. Uh, first of all, the drinking water needs uh, of the local people. And second of all, we're going to start an agricultural project to cultivate, grow and create opportunity for the local community there. Well, you have to understand that the people were a little skeptical at first, of course, because uh, three young guys are coming there doing a project and catching water from the fog, which they never heard before. We, so we started this project uh, by building a few fog nets with the local community and to show them how it works and show them that it does work. After we did that and after we showed them that it worked, uh, we saw a lot of interest coming out of the community but also from outside of the community. We were published in a local newspaper once and after that we got calls, emails from people in the region Tacna who were asking us about the project and about how it worked. The, the big change really happened after we went on the National News of Peru. They did a small item on our project and a young guy from a local TV station made a, a small documentary about the project. People were able to call into the, the show and ask us personal questions about the project and how it worked and if, it, if they were able to do it on their location. Uh, after that we saw people coming in from outside, students coming in to check it out, engineers from universities, the, the mayor invited us to come over and talk about the options of, this, of these fog nets. So after, after a while we were, every week we were working with about a hundred people which started at about 20 or 30 people so we made a very big growth and the positive energy was immense there. During the project period we've worked with a lot of different people but there was one person in specific who we've worked with uh, the most. His name is Nestor, a local guy who, who lived on the project site and worked with us basically every day during the three months we were there. So he learned everything our project has to offer, he knows how to construct everything and he knows how to run it. When we saw this water that captured these trapanieblas, we were surprised. Nunca hemos pensado que puede atrapar el agua con esas atrapanieblas. Y la gente o el socio de nosotros, pero ¿cómo va a atrapar la, el agua? ¿No? Entonces, eh, cuando hemos instalado junto con ustedes y lo mostramos a la gente, que el agua captura esta atrapaniebla, pero increíble para nosotros. No, primero sí había agua, pero ese iba a más lugares, pero muy poco, muy poco. Ese viene de la altura, esa agua, y ahora que un poquito crece, ¿no? Crece y, y falta ese agua. Ahora, ese agua lo, lo tienen depositado en otro sitio, y ese agua lo, lo, lo llevan a, a otro sitio, pero ya a nosotros nos falta agua. ¿no? O sea, agua, agua más que todo, nosotros necesitamos agua. Antes, no, 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 no había, no había estas atrapanieblas. Eh, ustedes... Eh, como llegaron en la, las primeras fechas, desde ese momento teníamos una información, como no conocíamos, nadie conocía acá en, la, en el departamento Tacna, nadie conocía esta atrapaniebla. 
ahora que hemos instalado junto con ustedes y ahora conocemos cómo funciona, ¿no? Entonces, este es el primer creativo de este, en esta ciudad de Tacna, los atrapanieblas. Lo podemos instalar a otros sitios que necesitan agua verdaderamente. Eh, sí, sí podría. Y también nosotros queremos que se instale para todos. Entonces, ahora nosotros pensamos eh, eh, hacer más atrapanieblas o de repente cambiar un poquito más. Entonces, con eso nosotros quedamos eh, plantar más plantas y eh, con eso también podemos ay ayudarnos. Entonces, para ya tener agua con estas atrapanieblas, entonces nosotros nos quedamos alegres, contentos. We planted a big variety of species uh, in our in our project. We've planted fruit trees, ornamental trees, medicinal trees, herbs and spices, uh, vegetables, flowers. We want to set an example that is as complete as possible. We want to show different ways of planting with different types of plants and trees and show all the opportunities we have in these circumstances. Our project is organic because the products end up being more healthy, uh, have more value to them and we are not degrading soil. So we can build our soil each year and have a better yield each year. A very important part of our project is biochar. Uh, biochar is carbon, um, which is used for agricultural purposes. Biochar has three major advantages. Uh, the first one is water retention. In these desert soils, in these sandy soils, you have problem with retaining the water that you give to your plants. So this biochar functions as a sponge which can retain the water. Uh, the second one is housing of my microbial life. Um, the biochar functions as the perfect housing for microorganisms. So by placing this in the ground, the microbial life can thrive in these circumstances. The third reason is retaining nutrients. Uh, because again of the sandy soil, the nutrients flush away and the biochar is able to retain these nutrients and capture them. And he's disposing them very slowly to the plant's roots and in this way we can keep it in one place. Uh, consolidar el apoyo de la Fundación Critten Waiter, de nuestros amigos holandeses, que gracias a ellos nos han venido a ayudar a aportar y colaborar en algo que realmente nos ha caído del cielo porque nosotros no tenemos ningún tipo de apoyo de ningún tipo de autoridad, de ningún tipo de institución del Estado. Entonces, tan han crecido eh, en estos últimos 10 años, eh, ha crecido por, por lo menos en un 20% con gente que ha venido de otros lugares. Pero el mayor problema que tiene Tangna es la falta de agua. Nosotros estamos en cabecera de desierto, el desierto de Atacama. Y precisamente este desierto de Atacama es el que nos genera un insuficiente suministro de agua. A nuestros amigos de Holanda que, cre que creyeron en, en ese aporte que han hecho de una manera voluntaria y desinter desinteresada. Y como ustedes están viendo, amigos en Holanda, su aporte su colaboración y su credibilidad en lo que podía hacer la Fundación Critten Waiter se está plasmando en una verdadera realidad. Muchas gracias y un saludo desde la heroica ciudad de Tacna a todos nuestros amigos de Holanda. The reason I do this is very simple actually. Um, by traveling a lot and visiting a lot of different places I've seen extreme poverty and I realized that me as a person can actually bring a difference to somebody's life on the other side of the world. And that's what motivates me to keep doing this. And our goal is not just to help people, but also to inspire people here to do something good for others in your own way.